Hello students and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Here in chapter 13, we're going to uh, we're going to start talking about domains of functions and also uh, how that's going to relate to addition of functions. Uh, yesterday's work you were introduced to uh, an identity function, uh, which was to say, uh, it was actually the very last one on exercise 56. If I had f of x equals x, as you all know, it's simply going to be a nice little diagonal line, like so. Okay. Um, what we can do with this, of course, uh, this identity relation becomes the basis for all of our straight line functions. We can think of everything as being some sort of transformation of this identity relation, of, you know, this identity, this function that is the identity relation. So we're going to use a uh, a big capital I, a little stylized capital I, to indicate uh, this kind of function because again, this is yeah, an identity function. So it makes sense to call it the I, like so. So, and then of course, uh, if I say a little subscript A like so, that implies that uh, this has a domain of set A, whatever set A happens to be, probably over reals. So, um, as we move on, let me move on down here. As I said, uh, as I, well, I indicated with my drawing, the relation uh, that is, by this identity function. Yeah, it's that nice little diagonal line. Nothing uh, too earth shattering about that. We can see it crosses through zero, zero, and our B line, it's going, you know, that is to say where X is one, the output is also going to be one. All right. So what I want you to understand, of course, is when we multiply that identity relation uh, times some value, all of the outputs are going to be a multiple of that distance. So in this case, if I say, you know, two times x or x plus x, either way, as we can see here, this is going to double the distance. You know, so from you know, instead of one one, now it's reaching to one two, and the negatives, of course, will also go in that direction as well. So again, you know, this was my, you know, this is the graph of my identity relation, right? And then uh, in this case, my f, function f here, could be defined as two times that identity relation over r. This again is what we'll call real function notation. Function notation will look a little something like this. You're probably used to seeing that or this. Okay. So real, real, real notation up here, function notation, one of these two. These are the ones you tend to see more often, but I want you to recognize that this notation is going to happen a decent amount, this real notation. So, um, as I mean, this is just a table of values relating what we saw up above, uh, where the identity relation and the uh, and f of x obviously had you know, different values. So when x is 1, the identity relation was going to be 1. When it's negative 1, it's going to be negative 1. Uh, f of x was going to be twice as much, because that was the relation. So again, I can uh, I can think of that f of x as being the the sum of two identity relations, and that you say well of course you know I know that one plus one is two and you know that's another way of saying two times one that seems pretty basic I would think, but we're going somewhere with this. This allows us to take any functions. This idea that I can add functions and now the the sum is going to also be some kind of function, and we can, it, it allows us to create uh, new functions composed of two different ones. So observe this diagram here. I've got a graph of f, got a graph of g. Notice what happens here. Uh, you see the, you know, you see my axes, L1, L2 axes, okay. The green wave that you see in here is actually, all the points there are going to be, can be thought of uh, as the, uh, difference between the uh, the blue and the red curves or is there some and yeah so in that regard if you take a look at um, you know so right here the blue and red you know both cross at this little point right here um, so the blue one goes you know up that much and the well heck the, uh, the red one goes up that much as well doesn't it so if I add these two together of course well, what do I have well, let's see 
it kind of goes twice as high. I hope that makes sense. Uh, over here they show, you know, here's f of x, and g of x is going to be this whole distance here. I'm trying to change my colors here. All right, this whole distance. Uh, since f of x was on the other side of the line, I'm going to subtract that much away. You know, so whatever you know this was here, I'm going to subtract that much away. And of course, it uh, doesn't make sense to subtract it from the top. Let's in fact take this and move this. Actually, here I'll do that. I'm just going to move it down to here. Oops, here we go. There. And now you can see that point along the graph of f plus g is going to work out to be some sort of arithmetical relationship between where f of x's point was and g of x's point was. This happens all along here. Uh, over here, you can see the blue curve is this far above the line, but red is below it. So if I go that, that many units up from where the red was, that'll be the value, that'll be the output for f plus g. The domain of these two graphs of f of g in this case, it looks like it looks like the uh, same on this drawing. It doesn't look like there's any difference. You know, just the values from a to b in both cases. So um, the good news, of course, is that when that happens, the domain of your new function will be exactly the same. But it's important that it's not all that you know that it's not always the same. Instead, I need you to look at domain of f intersection domain of g which has some pretty important implications and this is something i need you to stop the video and write this down in your notebook i'll wait okay you're done writing because you've unpaused the video so as you can see domain of f plus g will be defined as the intersection of those domains it's very important because uh, you're frequently going to encounter functions uh, that you're adding together that do not have the same domain their sum must only include domain values that are common to both f and g. Here's an especially weird one. Notice uh, for f, I've got uh, these ordered pairs. I'm going to underline each of the values that appear as inputs on f. It only consists of those four ordered pairs. g only consists of these three ordered pairs. I'm going to underline those. Notice that the only ones in common right now are the zeros and the sixes. So therefore, f plus g is only going to be composed of two points, zero, comma, whatever one plus the uh, negative two is. And the six is here as well, comma, the seven plus four. Notice that the two, two comma three, four comma five, three comma one, these wound up getting knocked out important that you understand that the domain of f plus g in this case can only be composed of the intersection of those values and if it's f plus g then that means i'm adding their outputs together if it's f times g i'm going to multiply them hope that makes sense um, i'm going to ask you to do exercises 57 through 62 it has you doing some of this work uh, again very, very important. If you didn't watch this video, I'll know because you're going to say, I totally didn't understand what to do with this, with these exercises. And again, you need to understand that the domain of two functions that I'm adding together, the new function has got to be the intersection of those domains. This was the domain of F. This is the domain of G. Here's the intersection of those two. So the domain of their sum can only be composed of those elements. I hope this made sense. Have a great rest of your day. Be good for your parents, and I will 